Wow, it's good to be back. How are you guys doing? Oh, man, I tell you what, it was a, a great time being away, but um, before, you, before we go there, can you think about it? There's only four more Sundays until the new year. Right? 2018, come in. You know, and um, I love the Christmas season. I love, I love this time. How many of you love the Christmas season? Right? I mean, it's uh, something about it. Um, yesterday, I was, um, you know, I had already planned that yesterday, Saturday, this Saturday, I'm going to wake up early and I'm going to play Christmas music. And I'm going to, my wife, my poor wife, every year, she's the one that decorates the Christmas tree. You know, I usually come home from work and it's all set up already. You know, and this year I decided because this Christmas tree was sitting there for a few weeks, not decorated, and that I was going to decorate and fix the lights on the tree. So that's the guy's job, right? I'm going to fix the lights, make sure I got all the lights in order. And, and so I did that, and, you know, I was kind of watching her starting to decorate, and I was getting tired. But there was a moment. Now, I don't know if you guys can recognize this, but there was a moment that I was putting up these bulbs or these little trinkets that we have. And what we have are pictures of our children since they were in grade school, you know, kindergarten and going up to first, second grade. And I was putting up these pictures on the Christmas tree, and I had a moment. And I was thinking, you know, and I was praising God because I was playing the Christmas music, right? Born is the king of Israel. And how good God is. And how time has flown. I mean, look at you guys. Think about it. Think about your children. How time has flown. You can remember some of you when they were little. My son's out of the home already. And how time flies. And always at the end of the year, I'd like to be prepared coming into the new year. How about you? I mean, looking forward to the new year. Are you looking forward to 2018? Are you? Right? Or are you afraid of 2018? Huh? I mean, guys, we've been through a lot in 2017. Amen? I mean, some of you have been through some crazy stuff. My, we, we lost two that went home to the Lord. Okay? Just in my family. My mother-in-law, my grandmother, you know, and some of you out there. But also, there were blessings, too. We had some come into the world, like Kavana there, the little baby, right? We have many have come into the world. Now, some of you are grandparents, right, this year, you know? And, again, life is sh short, guys. Amen? Look at your neighbor and say, life is short. Life is short. Amen? And coming into the new year is, is got to be something that you, we need to be deliberate Amen? Say the word deliberate. All right? Be deliberate. Now, I went to Maui last week, and I'm deliberate in going to Maui every year to seek God for 2018, to ask God, give me an idea of what the word is for every month and what the word is for the week, okay? And just kind of get a sense. Now, I don't got it all down. Amen? I mean, I'm, I'm not like, oh, wow, pastor, he's so holy. He gets everything. Right? No, no. I'm just being deliberate and saying, God, sh show me. Show us what we need coming into 2018. Amen? Amen. And, and here it is. And God is always so faithful. When I go and be by myself with God, and I share that with my wife, then I have my children come up, and I check in with my children. Are you okay with doing this? Are we going to continue ministry? And that's something that we follow the order to keep our family whole and unified. Amen? So here's the thing. So when I was there, the one word kept popping up was rise up, rise up, rise up. Say that word, rise up. rise up, okay? And I was like, man, rise up. I heard that so many times, you know, but what was that? God's going to cause his church to rise, amen? God's going to cause you to rise. 
It's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. God's going to cause us to rise. He's allowing things in the world. He's allowing things in your life. You can see it right now. You see it on the world stage right now. Amen? Look at North Korea. What's happening on the world stage? I want you to pull back and look. All right? God's going to cause you to rise up. All right? Look at your families. Look at the people that you know. Look at your coworkers. Look what's happening. God is calling us to rise up. And God's going to allow us to rise up. Amen? Amen? Husbands, husbands, this year, this year, we've got to rise up. God's going to cause you to rise up. There's going to be situations in your life, in your home, that you need to rise. Amen? All right? Wives. All the wives. I love my wife. Amen? And she's not here. She's over there teaching the children. But she's going to call you women to rise up. All right? What about children? You children, sons and daughters, to rise up. Fathers, if you're a father, to rise up with your children. I'm not going to leave out the singles. How many singles here? Say amen. amen. How many singles here? Amen. amen. If you're single, you're not out of this. All right? You're not, you're, you're not out of the picture. God is going to cause you to rise up. Amen? All right? Coming into 2018, God's going to allow, he's going to move, and he's going to cause us to have to. Amen? We got to. Amen? Got to. Two weeks ago, I spoke about 1 Peter chapter 5. And there was 1 Peter chapter 5, 8. You see, evil hates good. Amen? Look at your neighbor and say, evil hates good. All right? All right? From the beginning, right, from the first sin, the devil already has enmity against the seed of the woman. And that's Mary. Right? Okay? The seed of God. All right? So there is already conflict with evil right now in the world, which we have to acknowledge. Okay? Okay? We have to not just be blind to it, but really, really acknowledge there is an evil out there. Okay? There is something that you have to deal with. Right? Okay? 1 Peter chapter 5 says, So therefore be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. It's not in your notes. You can write that down. That was two weeks ago. 1 Peter chapter 5. All right? So what am I saying, church? What am I saying, families? Therefore, we need to be on point. Amen? Look at your neighbor and say, we got to be on point. We, we got to be on our game. Amen? We got to be on the A game. We have to be on point. And what is the point? On point on the gospel of Jesus Christ. Say, the gospel of Jesus Christ. All right, not on point on, on other things, but on point on the gospel of Jesus Christ. Why is this important? Because Jesus Christ, the king, right? He is the son of God who came from heaven to earth so that your sin, yeah, you could be saved from your sin. That's the on point part. That you can be saved from your sin. Amen? That he is the Lord of your life. That he is the authority in your life. That he is the peace, where you get peace, right? In your life. That he is your protector. Amen? This is the Jesus that we celebrate, right? Christmas time. Beautiful. Right? It's not just about the tree. It's not about the lights. It's about the gospel of Jesus Christ. All right? Oh, stay with me. Okay? Stay with me. The Jews were waiting for the Messiah, the anointed one. Okay? Back in the day, they were waiting for the Messiah, and he did come. This Jesus came from heaven to earth, who was born in a manger, the Bible says. 
from a virgin, and her name was Mary, to save the world from what? Their what? From their sin. From their sin. Stay with me. Okay? That one would be saved from their sin. Let me ask you this. Do you agree with this? Think about it. Do you really agree that Jesus came from heaven to earth, the Son of God, to save you from your sin? Amen? amen? amen. Can you hear an amen, right? Amen. Right? Because if you're, if, you're, if you're tottering on that, and if you don't believe that, if you don't receive that, this is where, again, the adversary, the devil, right, seeks whom he can devour. The gospel is going to be the, the point. This is where you got to stay on point. As a husband, you got to stay on point on this. As a wife, you got to stay on point. As a son, as a daughter, you have to stay on point. Because Jesus came to save you from your sin. Amen? Okay, stay there with me now. God revealed this to me. And I want to I set you free from this. Because some people get, get stuck on this. When I say Jesus Christ came from heaven to earth, died on a cross for your sin, most people hear it like this. Jesus Christ died on a cross for your sin. Your sin, sin, sin. Like it's so huge, my sin. And the focus is on your sin. You get it? What happens is, People start focusing more on their sin rather than Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sin. You get it? Jesus Christ, the Son of God, he came to die for your sin. Your sin. God is bigger than your sin. He's bigger, louder than your sin. Are you with me? All right? Because what happens is, in life, in the homes, we promote the sin rather than God. Amen? Are you with me? That's how the enemy comes in, and he flip-flops. He uses the truth, but it's a flip-flop. Are you with me? Right? Because your thoughts, your mind, focus on the sin rather than Christ and what he's done. We have to be on point on the gospel. Okay? Um, shoot. Jesus Christ came. Born in a manger. Died on a cross. Rose again to heaven. It doesn't stop it doesn't stop. It never stopped. Okay? Christ the king, preparing for the king, never stops. All right? Say that with me. Preparing for the king never stops. All right? It never stops. We got to prepare for the king every single day. Why? Why? Why do you have to prepare for the king every single day? He came already. But why do you have to prepare in your heart in your mind, why do you have to prepare? Because every day is a new day. That's what I wrote down. That down. Tell your neighbor, every day is a new day. All right? Every day is a new day. Okay? Every day. Today is a new day. Yesterday is gone. All your hurts, all your troubles, me yesterday putting my children's picture on the tree and looking at it, and having a moment, it's gone. It's done. It's but a memory. Tomorrow, when you wake up and you get ready for work, amen? How many of you love your job? Amen. I love my job. Right? Come on, guys. You got to love your job, right? You guys hate your job. I'm wondering about 99.9% .9 of you guys hate your job. How many of you love your job? Okay, you can lie if you like. I don't know if you're lying. <laughs> liar, liar, pants on fire. <laughs> I mean, where was I going with this? I was going with this. Tomorrow when you wake up, you got to get your babies ready. 
You get your babies ready. You get your children ready. You got to go to work, right? You got to make Jesus Christ the king, right? You got to prepare for the king. You got to make him there be the point of your life, the gospel of your life. Amen? You have to make way in your heart, in your mind, okay? Why? Because it's deliberate. Again, you have to be deliberate when you start your day. We have to be deliberate in what we're doing in regards to the Lord. Amen? All right? God was deliberate. He was deliberate in all that he's done. Amen? All right? So write this down. Write this down. Preparing for the king is an everyday thing. Write that down. Preparing for the king is an everyday thing. Amen? I'm a poet and I didn't know it. <laughs> Preparing for the king is an everyday thing. Why? Because now we're deliberate. We're not just saying pre preparing for the king is a Sunday thing. Preparing for the king is just a Wednesday night thing or a women's thing or a men's thing. It's an everyday thing. Amen? All right? It's deliberate. The coming of the Savior was deliberate. God was deliberate when he sent his son. Amen? Let's look at how deliberate God is, not was, is in Scripture. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 1. Get your Bibles out or your Bible phones or whatever. I got notes for you. Matthew chapter 1. Let's look at Matthew chapter 1. We're going to go from 17 to 26. But prior to that, Matthew chapter 1, 1 to 16 is a whole bunch of names, which I'm not going to go through. You can go home and go read that. And it starts from, right, it goes 42 generations. Abraham, David, all the way to Jesus. A whole bunch of names, right? This to that, this to that. And showing, again, the, the family line. Amen? The family line. Do you know that there's like 353 or maybe even 400 prophecies that point to Jesus Christ? All right? 353, but from about Abraham, there's 348 from Abraham to Jesus prophecies about the coming of Christ, about who he is, the king, the savior, the anointed one, the Messiah. Okay? So we're going to pick up from verse 17. Okay, stay with me. Matthew 1, 17 says this. All right. So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. From David until the captivity in Babylon are 14 generations. And from the captivity into Babylon until Christ are 14 generations. Matthew is writing the gospel of Jesus Christ for a Jewish audience. Amen? He's not writing to people in Kailua. He's not writing to people in Waianae. Right? He's writing to the people with a Jewish understanding. Amen? And for a Jew, it made sense. All right? Because when you first read it, you go, this to that, this to that. Why are you going all the way? Just tell me the story about Jesus. Right? Why is he doing that? Because it makes sense to the Jew. It made sense to show the line and the prophecies through that line confirming who Jesus is. Amen? Are you with me, Bible scholars? All right? Stay with me, right? Okay? So, so he's got all these names. Now for the Jew, it's making sense. Right? You ever had your mom or your auntie and uncle, and you're over there at a family party, and they say, who's that? They go, oh, that's your grandma's auntie's cousin's sister related to your cousin, and blah, 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 right? And then you follow the line, and then you go, oh, yeah, that makes sense, right? For them, it made sense. So now, when they read the next set of scripture, right? Proving who Jesus is. Now this is the story about Joseph. All right? How many of you ready for that? The story of Joseph. Okay? So this is how we're going to prepare for the king on a daily basis here. There are three components found in preparing for Christ the king. I just wrote that down. What are the three components? Three things 
that you're going to have to engage with, right? That you're going to have to engage every single day to make Christ your king. All right? But we're going to look at Joseph's life, Joseph's story right here from verse 18. Praise God. Are you ready? Hey, are you ready? All right, there you go. Okay, here we go. Verse 18. It says here, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. So here's a story. In those days, the Jewish wedding, there was two parts. One is like an engagement. So it's like you're married already. This is when the families would do a contract, right? And then you would get married, and then you could take your bride home to be with you. Well, during this time of that engagement, betrothed, Mary got pregnant. All right? She got pregnant. Joseph was what? In a difficult what? Situation. So write this down. He had a difficult decision to make. Write this down. The first component when making Christ your king on a daily basis, you're going to come across difficult decisions. Amen? Amen? You're going to come across, and you might be in a difficult decision right now. All right? And you're, you're facing it right now. Joseph had every right, according to scripture, to really just put her away. I mean, really, and with the law, I mean, she could have been stoned to death. Right? Right? So, I'm sure there was disappointment. And it doesn't say how Joseph felt. You know, I don't know. Maybe he had compassion. Maybe he had, you know, feelings or whatever. But it says he was a just man. Say just man. So he was a holy man. He was a righteous man. Amen? And this holy man made holy decisions. Right? The holy man made holy decisions. He didn't make a decision on what was happening. He made a holy decision. A righteous decision. Amen? Right? And that made all the difference. None of us are exempt from that. From difficult decisions. How many of you have difficult decisions today, right now, to make? Seriously, honestly. Joseph was a holy man, and he made holy decisions. And I believe that's what God wants us to do. Not just move so quickly, not just, just be rash, but slow down and think about this decision. Think about the consequences. Think about what's happening. Right? Joseph didn't run and just say, tell everybody, right? There was a moment. I'm going to put her away quietly instead. All right? Let's look at the next. Continue. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take you marry your wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. So the first component that Joseph went through was a difficult decision. Like you and I, there's difficult decisions. The second component that you're going to engage, will have to engage every single day, is this. There's always going to be a divine intervention to prompt us to do the will of God. Write that down. There's a moment when God is going to speak to your heart and prompt you to do his will, not your will. Amen? Amen? His will, not your will. Joseph obviously was a God-fearing man. And his divine intervention was in a dream. Think about that. It was in a dream. How many of you have dreams? Amen? Amen? I mean, I don't think I've had a dream that, you know, God spoke to me and said, do something. I've never had that happen. 
I have crazy dreams, <laughs> right? I have crazy types of dreams. I have, um, you know, dreams that I have to really think about. But Joseph obviously had a dream saying, look, take Mary as your wife. That is which conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. And Joseph moved with that. Amen. Some of you are getting divine inter in intervention even right now. I think God is speaking to us more than you'd like to um, even admit. Amen. There's spiritual post-it notes all over the place for you. All right. Spiritual post-it notes everywhere. If you really look, you'll really find, you'll, you'll find them. You know? It could be through a friend talking to you. It could be from a sermon. It could be from a song. Mostly, it's going to be from the Word. Amen? From the Word of God, giving you spiritual post-it notes, say, hey, this is what you need to do. This is my will for you. Amen? Amen? Is God speaking to you today? Is he giving you spiritual post-it notes? Is he leading you? Is he guiding you? Are you following his lead today? Amen? We got to listen, hear, ask, seek, knock. Amen? All right. So what's the first one? There's difficult decisions every day. What's the second one? There's always going to be divine intervention right now. God is moving in your life to make a correct decision, to stay the course. Amen? The last one. Here we go. The last point. Verse 21, it says, And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from what? Their sins. The first component there's always difficult situations. The second one, God is going to speak to you and cause you to move towards his will. And the last one, there's always a greater purpose. There's always a greater purpose for the most difficult decisions you have to make in your life. Amen? Always a greater purpose. Joseph received the word of God. Amen? He was a God-fearing man. When you trust God, when you follow his word, amen, God will move on your behalf. And not only that, that brings you closer to God. That builds your faith, amen? Builds your faith with him and for him. Preparing for Christ the King is an everyday thing. But you got a choice. We all have a choice. We all have a choice every single day. This Christmas season, God really imparted on my heart today is to pray for every single family here today. Whether you're with your spouse or you're here without your family, we want to pray for you today. Amen? We want to pray for you. And here are the three things that we want to pray. For you to come into the end of this year and going into 2018 is number one, a prayer of commitment. Say a prayer of commitment. To Christ and to one another. So if you've got your family, your husband and his wife, we're going to commit to Christ and to one another. Amen? The next thing we're going to pray for you today is prayer that we ourselves embody God's love, his mercy, his grace. Wally, bless you, my brother. All right. All right. I'm glad you're here, Wally. I'm going to pray for you. He just had a, a transplant, a liver transplant. Praise God. Come on, give it up. Came out yesterday, and look, he wants to come to church. Praise God. Wally, we're going to be praying for families today. We're going to be praying for you today. All right. So we're praying that we embody God's love, his mercy, his grace within our homes. Amen? Sounds good? Sounds good, right? And we're going to pray for unity within your homes and protection for your homes. Sounds good? 
All right, sound good. And we're going to bring all the children in. So everybody's coming in. Come on in, guys. You guys can take a seat. <clears throat> Come on in. Man. All the children are going to be coming in. Man, I love you guys. I love you. I love you, church family. I love you, my friend over there. I'm glad you're here. Um, this is a, a, a very great moment that you're about to partake in. I mean, really, honestly, how many of you want God to just be the center of your life, number one, and in your home? How many of you really would like that in your life and in your home? Yeah? Yeah? And I know, I know a lot of you, and I don't know all of you, and some of you, who you are here without your family, but you can stand in the gap for your family. You can stand in for them because you know that they need what we just heard. They need the Lord Jesus to know that he died on the cross for their sin, that God is bigger than the sin. Amen? So we want to pray for the families. The children come in? Come in? Okay. I don't want to start without them. Right? So I want you to think about what we're going to do. A couple things to think about. Is there anyone in your life that you need to forgive? Is there anyone in your life that you need to really forgive and let go? See, because if you understand the gospel, right? He went to the cross for my sin, God. Then therefore, I should be able to forgive those who have sinned also against me. Forgive them, right? Because they need that with God also. So I encourage you today to think about that. If there's anybody that is really, really heavy on your heart that you need to forgive, forgive them today. Start fresh. Start this Christmas season. We've got four more Sundays until Christmas Eve, right? Or Christmas Day. Start building upon that. Just let God have all of you. Let him be at the center of your life and in the center of your homes. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, I'm going to have the children go by their parents, yeah, because we're going to bring them up here as a family. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. And let's not allow the adversary, the devil, to try to, again, steer us away. Amen? So let's pray first. Every eye closed, every head bowed. Well, Lord Jesus, we just come before you right now, and we thank you for today, and we thank you for your love and mercy and grace, and we realize, Lord, that as even Joseph trusted in you, Lord, and he was in a difficult situation, Lord, he had every right. It wasn't fair. But, Lord, he was led by you, Lord. And there was a greater purpose, and I don't think that he even really understood. And that greater purpose has reached us here in the islands, Lord, has touched our homes, has touched our lives. And today, Lord, we just come before you with thanksgiving first. But now, Lord, we ask for your forgiveness. We ask, Lord, that you forgive us for our sins, Lord, as we prepare to make these commitments to you, Lord, within our families and with one another, Lord, we come before you, Lord God, and we pray this in your name, Jesus Christ, amen.